Would you like to be able to search millions of genealogy articles for free? Then you are in the right place because today we are digging into the periodical source index known as Percy. I'm Lisa Louise Cook and this is Genealogy Gems and here to tell us more about Percy is Allison Singleton. She is the Acting Genealogy Services Manager at the Genealogy Center at the Allen County Public Library in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hi Allison. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I knew when I wanted to talk about Percy here on the show, the person to talk to would be Allison because you guys are really the hub of all things Percy. So. I'm excited to have you here today. Um, and I think we probably need to start at the beginning, which is, what is Percy? Sure, let's get right into it. Percy, the periodical source index, is an index that we create in-house. And it indexes periodicals from all over the world. These are periodicals such as newsletters, quarterlies. They could be anything from genealogical society publications. They could be special interest group publications, um, surname, family society publications, ethnic society publications. So it's a little bit of everything. And what we're doing is we are indexing the titles of those articles. It's a subject index and it's full of amazing pieces of information that a lot of people don't have access to from home otherwise. So we're able to take that information that people boots on the ground, either in the locations where these publications are um, from, or if these are publications that are very specific and they dive into a topic really deep, they're the experts, the subject experts, and you're able to get the information from the people who know the most, which is invaluable as researchers. I absolutely love going through these different records. Um, so the different things that you'll find are maybe Bible records, maybe you'll find some source materials, ancestor charts, um, perhaps it'll be a transcription of original records. You know, in fact, somebody actually found a transcription of records that later burned in a fire. Oh, wow, That's, that would be amazing. Yeah. So that was a very exciting day. There were tears. It was yeah. awesome. So you never know what you can find. Now, I don't guarantee that everybody's gonna find a gem like that, but there is hope. There's hope to break through some brick walls, maybe get some research techniques, or at least learn about some different people who are doing research on the same topics as you. Exactly, and Allison, a lot of these periodicals could be quite old, couldn't they? I mean, I think about genealogy society newsletters. Those have been around well before we ever got online and started sharing information on the internet. So are those included as well? 100%. We have periodicals that go back to the 1800s and it's pretty amazing to go through some of the results. I really enjoy being able to show someone that somebody's already written something on their family history back before they were ever a thought, their parents were a thought, even grandparents were a thought. Terrific. So these are articles and you said it was a name index search. So uh, we've been talking a lot about indexing these days with the 1950s census and people are very aware that they're going through and, and grabbing pieces of information out of the census. Well, this is sounds like it's the same with these articles. So uh, we may not necessarily search on the name of an ancestor versus a topic or a place. Would that be fair to say? It's a mix. So when articles are written, it's the title of that article that are typically indexed. The exception is if somebody names an article something like, oh, bones, and you don't know exactly what that is, the indexers will put in that it's cemetery records. But it's basically just going to go by the titles of those articles. And not all of us have articles written specifically about our ancestors. So I would recommend doing a surname search, but also doing a location search, a topic search. There's a lot of different types of searches you can do. 
we can dive a little bit deeper into that later, or anybody can contact us. We would love to talk to anyone who wants to dive into Percy a little bit deeper. Awesome. So now you're at the Genealogy Center, which is a, a specialty kind of section of the Allen County Public Library in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And you guys have an extensive genealogy website we've talked about here at Genealogy Gems. Um, tell us about specifically what we're going to find at the Genealogy Center website. How do we access and do these searches that you're talking about of Percy? Yes, of course. So if you go to our website, genealogycenter.org, there is a green button on the left-hand side, if you scroll down a smidge, called Our Resources. Once you click on that, there's two options. There's free databases and there's on-site databases. The free databases are the ones that you can access from anywhere in the world at any time of the day. And those are the ones you want to click on. Once you get that drop-down menu, go to Percy, start your searches. Terrific. And I've seen that there's a lot of different um, buttons on the home page. Where do you typically start? Does it depend on what your genealogy question and plan is? Or do you have one favorite kind of starting place for your searches? It depends on what my research question is. Typically, mm -hmm. I do like to do a surname search first just to see if I'm lucky enough to have a article for the surname I'm looking for, uh, whether it be a personal research uh, problem that I'm working on or if it's something for a customer. You never know what can pop up. Once I've finished with that, I then go to the location and start diving a little bit deeper. And I'm usually looking for an event. And so I want to search for all the different search terms that I can think of that surround a specific event. For example, if I'm looking for maybe a death event, I'm going to look up the word death, died, um, see here, burial, funeral, um, probate, will, cemetery, anything, anything that has to do with a surrounding a death event is what I'm going to look for. It's not just one word. You're not going to look and just say, well, I, I want something on the death. It should just come up under death. No, it's going to come up under anything the author thought of to call it. And some of them get pretty clever, which is interesting, but unhelpful. Terrific. Well, you've really whetted our appetite for these um, really one-of-a-kind kinds of articles that are over at Percy. How do we get access to the article once we've found it in the index? That is the beautiful part. You have multiple options. The first option would be to contact the publisher. I usually recommend going to the source when you want something. Um, and many times if you contact a publisher, especially if it's a smaller periodical um, or even a local one, you might be able to just find it online. Perhaps they've been digitizing their own or perhaps someone would give you a copy pretty easily. Sometimes there's a nominal fee. Another option is to put the periodical title into WorldCat. WorldCat.org, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's an excellent research tool for genealogists because you can find where a local copy of that periodical would be and maybe get it interlibrary loaned or go to your local library where they have it. And lastly, but not least, you can order it from us. There is a nominal fee and you do get to fill out a form, which is not always fun, but we will fill your request as quickly as we can, but give us about mm, four to six weeks. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you've given us a, a fantastic kind of overview. Let's dig in a bit. Can you share your screen and let's take a look at uh, your web, the website at genealogycenter.org and Percy. Okay, terrific. So we are at, uh, it's genealogycenter.org, right? That's the best way to get to the website. Correct. I do know okay. that once you're on our website, it autocorrects to this. This is yeah. basically what the genealogy center is at the Allen County Public Library. So once you type in genealogycenter.org, it just takes you to this page. Fantastic. Okay, so help us navigate our way. How do we get to Percy? Perfect, so we just go to our resources, and then you go to those free databases. Uh, I remember seeing down. many of these. The last time we met, there were so many great ones there, but th you're right, there's Percy, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on the periodical source index and now we have our portal to all these periodicals. So the first thing that I typically do is start with those surname searches. And something that I think is really interesting is when you have a name that is a common word. So one of the examples I like to do is actually a surname that one of my colleagues searches, church. When you search church in things like newspapers, you get every church known to man, building-wise or denomination, not surnames. Yeah. The beautiful part of this database is it actually brings up the surnames. Oh, fantastic. So we don't have to slog our way through all those other common words. It knows we're looking for a surname. Exactly. And then once you're in here, you can search within the results. But if you do the search up here under the results, it will come up with anything that's in the title of the article, the periodical, or the publisher. So if you put in a location, such as Ohio, saying you only want results for Ohio, it's also going to bring up anything that's over in the publisher. So perhaps it is something you're looking for or perhaps not. Terrific. So I can see titles with still names of people with church as a surname, but a focus on Ohio. Okay, that's great. Exactly. So it's not like you mentioned, not everything is indexed in these articles. It's really like you picked the top uh, pieces of information that we would need in order to search the title, the year published, the publisher. So we're not going to be doing a lot of just keyword searching. Correct. You're going to okay. be looking for information in the article title. So you're looking for the events that your ancestor was involved in, occupations, um, you're looking for anything that you're, could have impacted your ancestors' lives. The wonderful thing about periodicals is a lot of times they can add more of that story to your family tree. Oh yeah, because I'm seeing Abigail Church witchcraft case. Okay, so this looks like it came out of a periodical from 1924. Um, is this something you guys would have on your shelf then? Yes, this is our call number right here, the 977.1. And so this is telling you exactly where to go, what volume, issue, and the date. Now we talked for a second about that when we do these searches and we see something, we think, oh, that's the right time frame, the right place, maybe got a name in there we want. I want to take a look at that article. Um, how would somebody go from here? Because I don't see anything clickable. How do we get then the article this is referring to? So we offer three options. Um, there's always the fourth <laughs> of looking to see if it's been digitized online. Oh. With 1924, there is a good possibility that this might be online somewhere. And doing a possibly even Google search of the title of the article might bring it up. But the first thing I would do is contact Ohio History Connection and see if they have the periodical available either online or could send me a copy. Mm -hmm. The next thing I would do is take the title of the periodical, copy it, and put it into worldcat.org. Okay. And see if there is a location that has it nearby. So you can put in your little zip code here and then see if there's a library. So it's the library zip code right now. So it's bringing up that we have a copy, but all these other places have copies as well. Fantastic, that's such, such a great tool. It really is, it looks like there's around 300. Mm. So just for that one is pretty amazing. Now, if you wanted to order it from us, which you definitely can, there is a link up here to order articles. Now it's going to bring you to a PDF and you get to fill this out and then send it to us via email. It does say that there's a charge. It doesn't necessarily need to be prepaid. Um, if you want to prepay it, you are welcome to. I know our address isn't on this specific form, but you can find our address on our website pretty easily. 
But the biggest thing is to fill out the form with the information and know that there is a 750 charge for the form and then a 20 cent per page copy that will be billed to you. Um, it does take quite some time to pull the articles and then make the copies. Everything is done by hand. It's not digitized. And are, is it a digital copy, like a PDF that we're going to get, or do you actually mail us the paper copy? It depends. It depends on what you would like. So okay. I would recommend noting that you would like it via email or a paper copy. And also, uh, I noticed on that form, there's a spot for several. So if we were going to pay the $750, we might want to take a second and see if there's any other articles we want so we can do it. I assume the $750 is for the entire form? Yes. So it's $750 for this entire form. So six articles. Um, Great. That works for that 750 and it's actually pretty nice because once we get these forms in um, they are filled in order that they're received and it does take a little bit of time because as I said everything is done by hand so we are trying to make sure that each of these are accurate and you're getting the information that you are seeking in fact we look to see if perhaps the article that you request if, even if it doesn't state it, sometimes we try to see if there's additional pages that are not included in the article title okay. that are applicable to what you request. So we are definitely trying to make sure that every customer gets the information that they are seeking. Well, and you guys have that advantage. You're really looking at the original, the paper copy, not even just in a database. So you can do that little extra search. And I really liked your idea of the Google search. I actually did that with one of these articles that I found in Percy and discovered that the item was fully digitized over at Internet Archive. So right there, I was able just to go ahead and see it in the moment, which was really neat. Yes, and I highly recommend that. So I just went ahead and highlighted this and hit copy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that into Google and see what comes up. So it looks like we're getting information on it, but let's go ahead and put it in quotations. Yeah. And it doesn't look like we're getting an exact match. So I play around with this just to see mm -hmm. if there's anything else. And I do recommend that of anyone who's doing research on this. It looks like we're getting a lot of different hits of information that could be helpful, but the one that we're specifically looking for is not there. But it always is worth it to do a search and see if you can find it online for free and instantaneously. Free is my favorite four-letter word, so I yes. try to help anybody and everybody find what they're looking for without having a cost. Fantastic. So let's talk for a second, because I know, you know, you've been at the Genealogy Center quite some time and uh, you've seen so many of these periodicals. Um, help the genealogists to kind of really fully grasp what the potential is here and how we should be thinking about searching. So I'm guessing we're not always going to be really hyper focused on our individual ancestor, but we're going to think about them in the context of their life and see if there's an article that touches on that. Tell us a little bit about how to strategize. Sure, so there's a couple ways to do it. I prefer to go into the location base and look specifically where they lived. So we usually know where our ancestors were, even if it's just the state. I'm gonna go ahead and do a specific search for Allen County, Indiana. And then once you're in here, you get categories that you can look through. Okay. So you can see which ones are larger and which ones are smaller. History is the largest, but you can kind of get through here and see, okay, is there something that really stands out for what I'm looking for? Perhaps I'm looking for World War II information. So I would want to click on that topic and then kind of go down and see, okay, it looks like there is a periodical that was published here in Fort Wayne but is it going to have the information that I'm seeking? So I wanted to see if there were other ones that might be of interest. So I can actually play around with the name of the publisher and see if there's other ones. You can change it. It looks like there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. So it looks like you can this. sort, right, alphabetically? Yes. Uh, Carol okay. Lombard is from Fort Wayne. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. That's I why they're movies. <laughs> so there's definitely ways that you can play around with the publisher. Or maybe you're looking for the oldest periodical um, to see, okay, I want something from the time period. Perhaps yes. there's something in here. And I imagine, too, when you do find, let's say we find an article that really just hits the mark, then it tells us what periodical that's from, which we would assume that might be an opportunity for even more coming out of that same periodical. You can just search by publisher? You can search by publisher. You can search by the year. You can search for the periodical. So let's say, yeah, we found a ton of what we need from the beacon, and mm -hmm. we just want anything to do with this. So now we have, it's the largest periodical. So there's 323 entries from that total of 370 that we started with. So it automatically updated. I didn't see you clicking the enter button or anything, right? We could just type in that yeah, additional it, filter. It automatically updated. And then let's say, okay, I want more from this, but let's say I'm very specifically looking for, okay, I'm seeing medical. I would like to see all of the medical. So medical as a word in the title. Yep. So I now have these four different results. Well, medical is a good keyword, but you know, let's see if we can find, um, is there any sort of Red Cross? Yep. So there's uh -huh, two here. Yeah. What about doctor? No. Nope. So you gotta you have to be kind of creative with how you're searching it. So medic is still gonna bring up medical. And I see that it's updating right as you're typing. So you're actually kind of testing out med, medic, medical, mm -hmm. right? As you're typing. Army nurses at work, photos. Yeah, I don't even have to finish the word nurse. <laughs> right, right. So you want to just start playing around with the different terms that you think could surround what your ancestors' experience would be in potentially World War II in Allen County, Indiana. That's just an example. This is, I did Allen County, which is awesome because this is where we are, but I just also want to show you that we can go anywhere. I'm going to go to Texas. And we're going to go ahead and just go to Cass County. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there's definitely records. I can go to that World War II again. Because let's face it, World War II, World War I, it's kind of fun to research these areas. Um, they're kind of the, the new frontier of records that are appearing as people are donating more and more of their family records to different yeah. societies and libraries. Fantastic. So let's say we want, it looks like the periodical is Cass County Connections. So let's see if there's any sort of medical in here. Not in this one. So it looks like they don't have medical, but they do have the general servicemen or women. So I'm wondering if maybe that would have more information. There we go. Mm -hmm. We've gone... 17 from 21 entries. Although honestly, if there's only 21 entries, I would look at them all just to see if you don't miss anything. But that's a really good technique when you have hundreds and you can't miss it. You know, it's so much faster to, to try these keywords than to be clicking through every single page. Oh, definitely. And there's records for all over the world in here. So you never know what you can find. It might be the gem that you are seeking and you just don't know it exists yet. You know, th this has been terrific. And I think about how many people have at some point heard about Percy, but then got a little intimidated. They weren't quite sure how it was going to help. And then they got in there and they weren't quite sure how they were going to find what they wanted. Um, give us your, your last elevator pitch on why they should invest the time and try the Percy search engine. Sure. So Percy is constantly updated. We have around 3.02 million subject entries and counting. Those go up.
So we are constantly adding more information. So it's a database that you're going to want to search periodically from time to time to see what pieces of information might just be there for your ancestors. We've already built the framework for our family trees with the names and dates and places. We want to add more to that. We want to add more of the, the meat, the body to our family um, by adding these stories where our ancestors lived amazing lives. And hopefully searching Percy can help you find some of those stories. And you know, sometimes Percy can even help you find some of that framework. If you're looking for ancestors who are proving to be elusive, occasionally you can find that information that has been lost. That is such a great point. It's it's really not a brick wall until you've made your way to the Allen County Public Library website and the Genealogy Center to check Percy. Um, I, I kind of like Allison when I, I look through her. I, I just envision all the genealogists in all the different societies, all the archivists, people who years and years ago compiled this information and literally typed it up and printed it out in newsletters and and articles and here we are today being able to take advantage of it it's terrific it's an amazing piece of history that we're able to put our hands on exactly well Allison Singleton thank you so much for helping us uh, kind of get past our questions and start putting our hands on this fantastic resource um, again you can learn more about Percy over at the genealogycenter.org website uh, always good to see you Allison I hope you'll come back again soon Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.